So to get going with Git, of course you need to uh, have your own account. I'll just sign into mine here. Uh, oh my god. And the password, there we go. And now I'm in my account. And um, yeah, you can save that. Uh, shush. And um, here's, here's again the course plan, and now you can see that now I actually have uh, some more information available about the course plan, I can start working with it. This is, I'm logged in. When you're logged in, you can press the plus sign here and create a new repository. So let's say that you guys decided you want to use the ideas in the course planner, but inside your new system that you want to build called a booking system. Again, I'm just spitballing here. Maybe that's not what you want. You just want to learn the code. That's fine. But if you want to start, I'm going to start up by making an architecture inside Angular 2 that you can actually reuse in whatever project you decide to build. So maybe you want to already start preparing your own project here. And that's what I'm going to do now just to show you. So if you want a booking system, you call the repository name booking system. It's under your account here. I'm just going to keep this one right now. Uh, it's going to be a public unless you want to pay for it. Just keep the others here. Just ignore them for now because there's already an all file available and a readme file available. So I'll create the repository and it'll pop up with this. And this is very easy because now we can see how we'll actually, using the command line, deploy this to Git. So I'm going to copy this step by step. First of all, I need to open my, my tool here and I need to go into um, the specific folder. And in my case, it was the booking system. That's the one I want to put to Git now. So I open the booking system folder and then it says fire the first command here. And let's just go back to show you. Whoa. The first command is echo, la da la la la. And it's pretty much just building a, a text file called readme.md with information called booking system inside it. So it's just going to build a text file for us. Let's just go back to the command prompt, paste this in, and now I have a text file. So I, if I write dear or ls on the Mac, you'll see that now there's a readme file that I just created using this command. So what's the second command? Okay, second command, I need to init a Git repository locally. So what does that mean? Locally right now, there's no Git repository. If I go to the old other folder, there's actually a .git folder hidden right here, but there's nothing in the booking system right now. When I write git init like that, it actually creates this folder for me. So now we have the booking system and it's actually a git repository now. So if I go in there now, there's actually a new .git folder. Okay, that was step two. Step three, add the readme file. Actually, we have more than a readme file in our repository, so we're going to add everything in there. So if I write git status, you'll see there's a lot of files available and I need to commit them all. And the ones I don't need to commit, my git ignore file will make sure that I ignore those files. So I'll just write, I'll just write git add, and instead of readme file, I'll just write a dot. That means add all of the different files. Okay, so now it's done adding all my files. So if I write git status again, that's a good command to know. You'll see that we've added a lot of new files here. Okay, but the git ignore file makes sure that I only add the files that I allow to be added. Okay. Again, watch the video if you want to go more into details with this or write in the comments if you want me to elaborate. The next step was to do the commit. Now that's the first step to actually send some new information to your Git repository. Let's just keep the first commit command, but you can put anything in here. You could write, let's just write, add an A here as well to make sure that all things that I created are actually committed. And I'll write initial commit. This is just the message that you'll see out there. So now it's committed locally on your machine. That means that now it's on my machine, but I want to put it on github.com. So if I refresh here, there's nothing, no change up here yet. It's not sent to github.com, okay? To do that, I need to then first, since this is the first time, I need to explain the remote where, where do you actually need to send the code? And that's with this line. So I'm telling it the remote repository, uh, let's call it origin locally, is actually on github.com asuma and booking system git. I'll present her. So now it knows where to push the code, but still nothing has changed here, still the same. But this last line where I say, take the origin code you just explained here locally and push it to the master code, that's actually going to send it from locally to actually push it onto the git server. Now it asks me to log in. You might get it in the dialogue instead, doesn't matter, no difference, you'll do the same. I log in again. And it starts pushing to my account. Okay, it's done. So if I go and refresh now, you'll actually see that now the code is actually up here 
with the master branch. Okay, so now I'm actually ready to work with my repository and you guys have now two repositories available, the one you can build your own code in and the one where you can update the code to see my code. So now you can use them both. And I, of course, won't use this for anything because I'm building the code anyway, so you, good luck with that. See you next lesson where we will start making some actual code and I'll try and commit it the first few times so you guys can see how we commit and how we make tags. See you next time.